lesson a lesson day is kind of for all of us many ways to share the word many ways to share the word no that's nerks it doesn't end it's not going to end until end times so that's why it says end times the end of the taxes when jesus comes <laughs> so so that's why we say i do all things to christ to stay strong because the battle will never end as long as we stay connected praise god hey emergency 360 welcome back amen many ways to share the word now this the holy spirit gave me this to let us understand that all of us has an ability to share the word in some way there's so many tools today that we can be obedient to god's word that and i want to i just want us to turn to, together uh turn to matthew matthew 28 our text today is matthew matthew 28 because i want i want us to understand sometimes many people sometimes think well you know i don't know i don't know how the lord can use me i don't know what to do well what what you do is some of you some of you are already doing it and you don't even realize you're doing it. i'll tell you that in just a minute let's first read the scripture first uh matthew chapter 28 we're going to the great commission chapter 28 we're going to start at verse 19. chapter 28 19 and 20. amen a amen snurks amen that's like what you do verse 19 go therefore and make disciples of all the nation baptize them in the name of the father son holy spirit teaching them to observe all that i commanded you and lo i am with you always even to the end of the age now when we share the word when we share the word with others we're being obedient to this verse and there are many ways nowadays see so many people think you have to be uh behind the pulpit or you have to be uh, ordained but see all of us all of us if you're a follower of christ all of us who believe he saved all of us who believe. So all of us who believe should be spreading the word however it moves our life. A testimony is sharing the word. When you're praying for someone, you share the word. You're sharing God's love in you. And I have a I have several things I just want to list. And some of you may already think about it. The, what I've seen most of you already doing is when you share the visuals, the visuals on, on Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn, when you see a, a, a Christian a visual about anything, a prayer, scripture, the word of God, however you post it, wherever you post it, someone needs it. So if, I, I don't want you, I don't want you to, to underplay or downplay the power of sending that Christian visual, whether it's on social media. For God, I actually had last year, I actually had one person on Instagram tell me that it was reading my my daily instant visual that saved him. Now, I'm not thinking about that. Amen, amen, Erica. That's why I take a picture of the clouds and sunsets and sunrises. Because God's glory is when you just look at the sunrise. And that's the purpose of why we watch the sunrise every day. God's glory. Every morning we see some version of God's glory just singing to and praising as we watch a beautiful sunrise. And see, so whether you look at it or you share pictures, someone needs what it is you have to send them. So don't ever think, well, you know, I only have this to send. No, no, no. Don't ever downplay. If the Holy Spirit says, send a picture, the Holy Spirit knows somebody will be blessed by that picture. So see, that's how he, that's how the Holy Spirit uses each one of us. All of us have some way we can be a blessing. And when we're doing that, we're being obedient to his word to share the gospel around the world to whoever we can. Uh, so we got, we got, I got, I got about, 12 things written down. You don't have to list them unless you want to. But one thing is the Christian visuals. We said that. Christian visuals. Share scripture. I, gar I guarantee if you say, today the Lord gave me this scripture today, I want to share with you. And whatever you wake up, if the Holy Spirit gave you a scripture in your mind, post it. You're not the only one going to be blessed. I guarantee you. If you put that down, the, the, the scripture the Lord gave me today is whatever it is and you write it on you you share it on, on social media i guarantee you have at least one person every day say wow i really needed that because the holy spirit knows who needs to hear what and when so if you don't you just don't wake up accidentally with a with a scripture on your mind the holy spirit gave you that scripture and the reason it's ringing in your in your head is supposed to be shared with co-workers a friend online but someone is waiting for what he just blessed you to give let me say it again for the holy spirit put something on your heart to share to say or pray over he knows that someone is waiting 
for that blessing. So don't think it's being wasted. Everything you post is being used by God. So that's another way. So sharing whatever the Holy Spirit gives you. As you know, I do poetry. God changed my poetry. That was, a, that, was, that was the answer to a prayer. I used to write poetry just for the world. I only had 50 poems. And then I prayed, God, I want to write poetry for you, Lord. I want to write poetry for you. The Lord has given me 250 poems after I said that prayer. The, the two books of poetry, a new one's about to come out. So when you pray, Lord, I want to, I want to write for you. I want, to, I want to sing for you. I want to play for you. When you ask him to use your gift, whatever your gift is, he's going to take you at your word and use that gift to be a blessing wherever it is needed. So don't ever downplay whatever gift you have, talent you have, urging you have. You're not accidentally gifted with organization. If you, like Sister Jana, she has a gift of organization like never before. I've never seen a gift. And she doesn't understand, how come everybody can do this? I said, everybody's not gifted. That's how you know if you're gifted. If you do something really good and other people say, how can you do that so well? It's because you're gifted. They're not. We all don't have the same gift as it says in the word. We all have a different part of the body of Christ. Don't get jealous. Don't get jealous of someone else's gift. It's not your gift. We all have a gift that we can use to be a blessing to the Lord in our own gift. Don't ever get jealous of somebody else's gift and try to do their thing. Amen. Thank you, Erica. Don't ever try to do, don't ever try to do someone else's job because that's not your job. Stay in our own lane. The Holy Spirit tells us exactly what we need to do to be able to be a blessing. Amen. Yeah, man. Praise, uh, welcome back, Christine. So poetry. Poetry is a way. A spoken word. Poetry and spoken word, they all find the same. Okay. Blogs. Blogs is just the Holy the Holy Spirit gives you a, a brief message for the day. I have one friend of mine. He, he, he posts about two minutes every day. He'll give up and the Lord just put a put a motivation in his in his heart. And he wakes up every morning and says, you know, the, the, the Lord, the Lord was on my spirit today to stay strong, to stay strong and, 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 and don't give up. And the Lord says, and, and he gives a scripture and he woke up, he woke up with that on his mind. It only about, it goes about two minutes, but he does it every day. But see, everybody has something to share and it's not an accident. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you, not to keep it to yourself, but to share it. I, and I say this all the time. If I had not uploaded Bass in His Presence, a God's Healing Our Power, and just sat on it and listened to it myself, look at how many people would not have been blessed if I did not upload Bass in His Presence and God's Healing Our Power. If I just listened to it, I, I recorded it, and I just played it every day for myself. How many people would not be blessed by that? If, by me not uploading those two prayers? Because after I recorded it, I was just listening to it for me because I wanted to learn how to pray for an hour, bask in his presence. I, my back was hurt. I needed to hear healing. So I recorded God's healing our power. But I, I, orig I originally recorded it so I could listen to the word of God to heal my spirit, heal my back. And then the Holy Spirit said, don't keep it for yourself. Upload it. I'm going to bring a lot of people. I'm going to bring a lot of people to these two prayers. And now basking in his presence has over 1 million views. God's healing our power over 2 million views because God knows who needs prayer, who needs healing, who needs the word of God. We don't know that. We don't know how God's going to use us. But if the Holy Spirit tells you, post this, send that, pray for that person, he knows they need it. We don't. That's why we're being obedient. When we're being obedient to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit needs exactly who needs to hear when and what. How many times have you guys said, man, you, you, you go to an archive and the archive you pick, man, I need to hear this today. Have you ever said that? You go to an archive, the Golden Nuggets, and when you listen to it, you just you just pick one. And then, and then when you listen to it, and then when you listen to it, you go, man, I really need to hear this today. You, you didn't pick that by accident. You did not pick that by accident. The Holy Spirit knew you needed to hear, you need to hear some uplifting word. You need to hear patience. You need to hear healing. Amen, Pantandy. You uh, brought to you by Basilis Presence. See, we all know we need something. And the Holy Spirit knows exactly what we need to hear and when we need to hear it. Amen. Visuals I talked about. Bible studies like this. Bible studies like this one. There are many types of Bible studies. Uh, on the uh, online 
And so you're all drawn to whichever Bible study you like. But say like, say like you have a Bible study in your mind. The Holy Spirit has put a Bible study in your mind on a certain scripture. Don't say, listen, listen closely. Don't say, well, I don't know. I don't know if I could teach this. If it's in your mind to teach, the Holy Spirit is just giving you something. The Holy Spirit has just planted something in your mind to share. It's not an accident. Erica, command the morning. Amen. See, see, the Holy Spirit knows if you place a, if he places a Bible study in your mind, a scripture in your mind, just a word for the day. God bless you. God said, stay strong today. See you tomorrow. Just something that simple. God said, stay strong today, family. I'll see you tomorrow. Someone needed to hear that. Someone's a, someone was about to give up. And your video comes up. Hey, I just came on to say, God bless you. And God says, don't give up. See you tomorrow. And you climb. You lasted for 30 seconds. Yet that 30 seconds just touched somebody who was about to give up. See, God knows who needs to hear what and when. And that's what this whole lesson is about. There's so many ways to be used by God to be a blessing. I'm just listing a few of them. If you come up with some, please share them as well. Okay? Uh, we have Bible study. Fellowship. Fellowship. Now, we our fellowship is kind of unusual because we do an actual church service. And the way the Holy Spirit gave it to me, the Holy Spirit gave it to me is a, a Bible study with a church service format. A chat room environment. That's how you describe Golden Nuggets. Some people think we're a chat room. So what? sometimes they come on and they want to talk about politics. They want to talk about everything world. I said, no, no, no. We're not a chat room. We are a Bible study. And when we chat, we chat about things of God, praise reports, and prayer requests, and a word for the day. See, so that makes this one unique. But see, God may give you an idea for a different kind of Bible study. See, the, the, the Holy Spirit... When you, when you want to do something and you want to be different, sometimes you don't have to even wreck your mind how I'm going to be different. The Holy Spirit will tell you. The Holy Spirit made Golden Nuggets special because when I was moving my car to get away, uh, reset, Erica, reset. When I was moving my car because they were tearing the street up, I kept moving my car every day, move my car, because I had to get up at 6.30 in the morning to move my car. But I never, I didn't want to get up at 6.30 in the morning. I, I'm a night person. Getting up at 6.30 in the morning used to be, what? Wake up at 6.30 in the morning? I'm, I'm a late night person. I can't get up in the morning. Yet I had to move my car for 30 days straight because they were tearing up my street, fixing the street. So every day I had to get up and move the car at 6.30 in the morning. And so I fell in love with sunrises because at that time of year, at 6.30, the sun was coming up. I said, man, look at God's glory. Look at God's glory. I'm just going to record this. So first I was just recording and looking at the beautiful sunrises. And then one day the Holy Spirit said, minister, talk about the goodness of God while we look at the sunrise. Just, just say something about the goodness of God while you watch the sunrise. And that's how Golden Nuggets started. I had, I had not planned to figure out how am I going to do a Golden Nuggets? How am I going to do a Bible study? I didn't do that. I just talked about God during the sunrise for 30 days straight because I had to move my car. At the end of 30 days, somebody said, I'm so glad you come on every day. Every day? Every day? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I come on every day. I went home. I panicked. <laughs> I kid you not. I panicked because I just told somebody, yeah, I come on every day. I said, Lord, I had just done once a month in a mission for four years. I, miss, I did ministry and a mission for four years. And the mission in the mission season ended. I had just prayed, okay, God, what's next? But God knew how to do it. God knew that I would be overwhelmed if he said, Well, oh, son, I want you to do a, a thousand lessons. What? I would have I would have gone into further panic. But he didn't do that. He was slick. First, he made me wake up every day for for a month to move my car because of the street. Then he got me addicted to sunrise. And then he had me praising God to the sunrise. Then he gave me a following and it turned into golden nuggets. You see how he did that? You see how God did that step by step? He didn't hit me all at once. I need you to do a thousand, a thousand one, a golden nuggets and I need the order to be like this. It wasn't like that. He gave it to me one step at a time because God knows we can't handle but so much at a time. He gives us a piece by piece, one step at a time. And the more you give in, the more he gives you. Golden nuggets, the first 
50 with less than 10 minutes because I was so worried about uh, YouTube said, well, nobody watches nobody watches a video beyond 15 minutes. So when I started Golden Nuggets, I was so scared I would be able to keep people after 15 minutes. All I did was 15 minutes. But then I said, well, I, what do I do, Lord? Do I do praise or do I worship or do I do the lesson? Do I do Bible study? I said, Lord, what do I do? And Holy Spirit says, do all of it. Do all of it? Do all of it, yeah. Do praise, do worship, do a lesson, the praise, intercessory prayer. I said, but Lord, that's going to be over 14 minutes. Holy Spirit said, I didn't ask you a question. You said, what do you want me to do? The Holy Spirit said, give the people all of it. Some people will come for the whole meal. Some people just come for praise. Some people just come for prayer. Some people come for worship. Some co people come for all of it. You just put down everything I told you to do. The people who come for whatever they need, they will come to the meal for whatever part of the meal they need. So that's why we have golden nuggets like it is. And I'm giving you this example because the Holy Spirit has set up everything about golden nuggets. How it's set up, how, how it's unique. I, I What makes it unique is when I tell people, uh, well, golden nuggets, we watch the sunrise, a Bible study, we're watching the sunrise. People say, sunrise? What do you mean sunrise? I said, we're watching a sunrise as we're praising God, the actual sunrise every day in California. And the, guy, and the guy said, how'd you come up with that? I said, the Holy Spirit. I had no idea how Golden Nuggets were going to be different. But the Holy Spirit knew how to make it unique by starting it with the, the real sunrise every single day, sunset, whatever it is we got. The glory of God starts the Golden Nuggets every day. See, this is how the Holy Spirit speaks to you. When you have an idea and and you don't worry about how you're going to do it. When the Holy Spirit gives you an idea, he's going to make it sure that you understand and get to understand how to do it. Sometimes we block the Holy Spirit by asking questions. Well, I don't know. I don't know. What, uh, what do I do, Lord? What do I do? Stay calm. Have no fear. Stand still. And the Holy Spirit will plant and tell you exactly what to do. One guy asked me, he says, well, how come you, how can you do a praise and worship in a car? How come you stay in your car? What are you doing in your car all the time? I said, the Lord gave it to me in my car. If the Lord gave it to me in the car, why should I leave the car? If he gave me the following while praising in the car to show people you can praise God anywhere. You can get the Holy Spirit anywhere, not just in church, the house of God. You can praise God in the car, praise God in the park. What, what is, what is it, uh, the, the homeless mission? You praise God to the homeless. You're doing a, 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 a street mission where you go into the homeless on the street and you're praising God. You share the world, share the word. Wherever you are, God can use you. All he needs is a willing spirit. If you have a willing spirit to say, use me, Lord, however you see fit, he's going to use you. He's going to take you at your word. Lord, use me as you see fit for the kingdom. Now, once you say that, once you say that, you better be prepared. Once you say, use me, Lord, as you see fit. Woo, go. Let me tell you about that one. <laughs> I already told you about us. When I said, use me, Lord, and he said, okay, you're going to be doing gold nuggets for, uh, for a minute. You're going to be doing gold nuggets for a while. But like I told you yesterday, the thing that blew me away is when he said, uh, you and Sister Jonna, you're going to have to live every lesson you teach because I want your lesson to be true testimonies of what you're teaching. I didn't, like I said yesterday, I didn't even want to tell Sister John that the Holy Spirit told me that because these lessons have been heavy. Some of these lessons have been holding on for dear life, but that's what we had to do during the season. To be able to teach it, he put us through it. Every lesson we've done, we've had to live first, and then I taught it to you. And see, so when you say, use me, I say, be ready. Because one time, uh, I forgot somebody else uh, last year was having hard times and they were, they lost everything for a season and they were homeless for a minute. And I said, well, man, remember right now you got the fire of the Lord on you, yet you're homeless. But don't think you're being punished. God, God, what better way to, to minister to homeless unless you're homeless too and you got the fire of the Lord that they don't have. So when we used to, when we did the mission downtown, Yes, a lot of people were homeless and negative, but there were some people in the mission, whenever we came to praise, they lit up and they had the fire of the Lord. Now, they were homeless in the mission, and a few people came up and said, well, you know what, right now, the Lord has me here for a season. 
I said, what do you mean by that? I said, well, I wanted to, I wanted to minister, I wanted to minister to the homeless. And so right now the Lord took everything away from me so I could be in, in here with them and praising and worship them and showing them how to love the Lord with physically nothing. Whoa. I said, good God, praise God, glory to God. What a mission. I said, and, and this is the way they saw it. They didn't look at the homelessness as punishment. They looked at the homelessness as an assignment. An assignment. They lost everything. And instead of going into depression, they started praising God and worshiping and teaching others the word of God while they were homeless. And that's the that's the power of the verse. I have learned in whatever state to be content. Whatever we have, good, bad, a lot or less, when we're still praising God, that doesn't change. And then when that season's over, whew, when that season's over, he then takes you out of that season and moves you to a different assignment. Now where you used to be going through lack, now he gives you supernatural provision, overflow, and now you better be, you better be a blessing. Don't get overflow, get lazy. Don't, um, danger, real Robinson, danger, danger. Don't let the God, don't let the Lord bless you with much and you get lazy. See, he who is faithful in little will be faithful in much. God is watching what you do when you have nothing. Before he blesses you mightily, he wants to see what are you doing with little or nothing. If you love the Lord when you have little or nothing, then he knows that when you have much, you'll be a blessing. But for those, what those who get a lot and they get lazy, they stop praying. Now they got they got they got blessed. They're blessed now. They got new cars, new homes. Look at God has blessed them, and they forget to pray. They forget to praise. They forget to worship because they got their they got their blessing. Guess what? You can lose it as fast as you got it. You can lose it as fast as you got it because once you get it and you forget the Lord, guess what? You just step out from under His covering. He blessed you to be a blessing. But if you get blessed and you step out of the word and now you're in the world with your blessings, guess what? You can lose it as fast as you got it because you just step out of the covering of the blessings. The blessings are raining down on you to bless others. But when you get blessed and you go into the world, you're not, you're not under the covering anymore. You're not under Psalm 91 protection. You're now in the world with your blessings, and now the world's going to take that stuff away. The world's going to attack you from every angle, and the devil comes to steal, kill, destroy, to steal your spirit, steal your money, knock you on your butt, have you, have you go into depression, suicidal thoughts, because you had everything. You had it all, but you lost it. Why? Because you got it all and forgot the Lord. You got the money and the blessings, and then you forgot the Lord. Whew. That's that's the scripture. Love of money, not money. Love of money is the root of all evil. So when you pray to get blessed, also pray, Lord, help me always to be a steward and listen to you as to how you use my blessings, Lord. Help guide me to keep using my blessings. However I'm blessed, Lord, help me to be a blessing at whatever financial level. Help me to be a blessing to whoever at whatever financial level I am. Poor, rich, everything in between. Because he expects us to be a blessing to others. That way he is flowing through us. The blessings flow to us. And don't stop. They keep flowing to us and then through us into other people, other situations to be a blessing to others. That's when you that's when you're walking into God's will for your life with prosperity. Sometimes people preach prosperity. Some people preach prosperity and they get so caught up in the money, they forget about the blessings. All they're praying for is prosperity, not what to do with it. When you get to prosperity, let God use it to be a blessing to others. He didn't bless you for nothing. He blessed you to be a blessing, to show God's power, show God's testimony of how he saved you. And now you can be a blessing to others. He didn't bless you for you to buy 10 cars, five houses, and to travel around the world and forget God. He didn't bless you for that. He blessed you to be a blessing to others. How better can his light shine? We say, man, Lord bless me, but now let me share this blessing with others to let God's love flow through me. Let God's prosperity flow through me. Let God's healing flow through me. If I've been if I've been healed and I'm praying for someone else to be healed, I'm praying with power. If you pray to get healed and you get healed, your power of prayer is powerful. Don't keep it on yourself. Pray for others. Because whatever you did, 
to heal yourself praying can't work on someone else because pray you now you're healing pray for others now the holy spirit can show you first he shows you how he can work through you and heal you and now use that same power to pray for someone else and know he says these signs shall follow these signs shall follow those who believe in my name they shall cast out demons speak with your tongues take up servants if you drink anything deadly it shall no, no means hurt you you shall lay you shall lay hands on the sick and they will recover the the jesus gave us the bar that's the bar right now these signs shall follow those who believe now don't 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 downplay yourself if you if you can't do these things yet don't say oh i'm a failure i'm a failure the devil is a liar don't worry if you can't do all these things you have to we have to work on faith our entire life hey millie <laughs> we have to work our faith our entire life faith gets stronger what faith comes by what hearing hearing by the word of god the more time you with god the stronger your faith don't think you're going to move mountains all of a sudden if you have little faith don't try to move mountains if you know you have little faith start small Start small. Praise God. I can I, I can do all things through Christ today. Whatever comes my way, I'm going to be victorious. And you work on that today. And now you showed yourself, wow, I did everything today. Oh, I'm stronger. And now tomorrow. Now, now tomorrow's today. And you increase your faith step by step. And next thing you know, you got mighty faith, unshakable faith. Faith, well, see, whew. see the biggest problem we have is trying to do too much too soon because sometimes you try to have faith in something and you really don't believe it let me say that again sometimes you try to have faith for something and you really don't believe it you can't have faith and don't believe that doesn't go together faith and unbelief that doesn't go together when you pray believe you have received it faith in what you're doing and knowing going to happen you have to pray without ceasing pray and know you and believe when you pray, believe you have received it. Simple as that. When you pray, believe you have received it. When you believe you received it, you see it, you believe it, you receive it into your heart. You see it, you believe it, receive it into your heart. And so that's that's where you gotta keep you gotta keep that every day. Like what uh, like, like Sister Anita, uh, Sister Anita uh, joined us the first year one, and she was homeless, and she said she said I wish I I wish I could. I could be a blessing to people, but I'm homeless right now. And I said, "But well, don't worry, you still got the you still got the fire of the Lord." She didn't understand that even though she was homeless, she had the fire of the Lord all over. Her. And when I told her, "Don't worry, don't worry," you, you but look at it, you're not the same. You may be homeless, but you got the fire of the Lord, and they don't. Which means God is using your fire to bless others who are homeless, to have faith, to hold on. We don't know when God's going to bless us. We don't know. But while we're waiting, we hold on to the Lord. We stay on fire. We praise every day. We worship every day. We use, let the Lord use us every day. It doesn't matter what level you are. You keep praising God anyhow at every level with much, with little. You praise God with everything you got. It doesn't matter what you got because you got God. Woo! Let me say that again. It doesn't matter what you got. As long as you got God, it doesn't matter what the things are, the things in this world. When you got God, you got all you need. When you got God, you got, let me, whoo, whoo. When you got God, you got all you need. You don't have things. Things come and go. Oh, but Jesus, holy Lord. When you hold on to God's unchanging hand, he never, I would never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you even to the end of the age. It doesn't matter how hard it is. He's in the fiery furnace with us. We, he's in the lion's den with us. He, no matter how bad it looks, he's with us. He, remember yesterday, what, Psalm 139, even in darkness, there is no darkness in you. Amen, amen, Erica. Even in death, he's with us. Because if we believe and we're connected, if we believe and we're connected, when it's time to go, when it's time to leave this earth, we know where we're going to be. Because we'll thank you, Lord, because we the dead shall rise first. We know we're with him. He's with us. He's kept us the entire time. So whenever it's time for us to leave this earth, who we know we love the Lord, thank you, Jesus. We love him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Whenever, whenever, whenever it's time to go, we know we love the Lord and we know where we're going. See, that's why people fear. 
That's why people walk in fear. When you don't know where you're going, that's the time to fear. When you don't know where you're going, you better recognize, you better get you better get it right now. If you don't, if you have a fear of dying because you don't know where you're going, you better get it straight. You better say that prayer of salvation at the end of this lesson. Because if you don't know where you're going, you got some problem. That means you've been living some, you've been living in the world and you're doubting. If you love the Lord, you don't have any doubt. If you see his face every day, we have no doubt. We love the Lord with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We praise God every day. We seek his face every day. When you know you're doing that, there is no fear. There is no fear of death when you know you love the Lord and you live for the Lord. There is no fear because we know where we're going. But if you don't know where you're going, you better, whoo, you better start, you better start praying now. You better drop your knees today and say the prayer of salvation because you may not be here tomorrow. And if you left tomorrow, would you be going to the right place? If you say, uh, I'm not sure, you're not sure, you better be sure. If you're not sure, that means you're doing something that you shouldn't be doing. If you're not confident and knowing you live by the word of God and you're doing everything you should, the best you can. See, we can't, we cannot do more than the best we can. All we can do is the best we can, but God sees that. God sees that we're doing the best we can. And if you're doing the best you can, that's all he needs because he sees your heart. But if you're out there playing, you're out there playing the word of God, you act like a Christian on Sunday and you send in Monday through Saturday. Excuse me, excuse me, you're going the wrong way. If you praise on Sunday and live in sin Monday through Saturday, guess what? You might as well be a wolf in sheep's clothing. You 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 fool yourself and you and God, you're not fooling God because God sees that. God sees a fake Christian acting like a Christian on Sunday and living in sin Monday through Saturday. You think you're actually going somewhere living like that? And that's where we have to share the truth. We have to share the truth. And the truth will set you free to know exactly what's going on. Hey, Alma. So, so that's why we got to understand the importance of letting our light shine. We sing it every day. There's no light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. That's why we let the light shine. Let God's light shine through you. You're being a blessing just when you smile at somebody. When you say God bless you, you're letting God's light shine through you. See, these are these are all the ways we share the word. When you let God's light shine through you, that's another one. Let God's light shine through you. You're a giver, you help people, you volunteer, you share. See, these are all the ways of sharing God's word just in your behavior. When people see God all over you, they see the anointing. They don't understand what the anointing is, but when you got the anointing all over you, they're drawn to it. They, they don't even understand why they're drawn to you. They're drawn to your anointing, God's love, God's peace. Nobody wants to be around a, a, a negative person. Nobody wants to be around a complainer. Nobody wants to be around a person who's always fussing. They want to be around people who are peaceful. They want to be around people who have joy. They want, to be, they want to be around people who always has a love of God in their heart. That draws people to you. And that's part of God's light. We sing about it every day. This is the light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. That's, that's why we sing that song. Wherever we go, it doesn't matter what we're going through. This is the light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Doesn't matter. Good times, bad times. This is the light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Amen. Amen. Other places, music, music, of course, if you love music, music, you can share the word through music like I do. I write, uh, the Holy Spirit blessed me to write songs. I, I, and that was another prayer, another prayer. See, these are examples. I pray to the Lord, Lord, bless me that I may be able to write music for you, Lord. I love music already. Praise in your face, devil. See, I already love music and I was a musician, but after, after I left college, I had no desire to go into nightclubs and, and and other places of music. I didn't I didn't want to play nightclubs. I almost quit playing the trumpet because after college, after the marching band and the concert band in college, I almost quit playing the trumpet because I didn't I wasn't into the the nightclub stuff. And I said, Lord, uh, bless me in some way, Lord. I want to be able to keep playing. And then He put me in a season in a church where I played the horn in the orchestra for the church. And it renewed my love for playing the trumpet. I said, wow, I'm playing for the Lord now. I've never felt this. I've never felt this before. All of a sudden, I was not just playing to be playing. Now I'm playing for the Lord. That gave me a whole new motivation to practice my trumpet. So now, man, I love, I love, wow, 
That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. When you when you when you go into to loving the Lord and seeking his face and, and let him guide you, he's using all the things you love to be a blessing. And that's that's why we do that stuff. When we love the Lord, we let him use us however he sees fit. Amen. Amen, Susan. Your son gave it to a homeless man in the shelter. Praise God. See, when we give to others, and we know we may we may we may not have much. But when we give whatever we have to be a blessing to someone, God sees that. That is letting God's love shine through us. Okay, what else? Uh, video prayers. Video prayers, like I just said. Whether you record your prayer on a video like I do, or you just record your prayer on, a, on, on audio. See, God, the, the main point of this lesson, if you leave nothing else, with this lesson, the main point of this lesson is if the Holy Spirit gives you an idea to share the word, whatever it is, whatever that idea is, don't don't stop the idea. Well, I don't know how I'm going to do that. Or, well, I don't know what to do. Stay still. If the Holy Spirit gives you an idea, at some point, he's going to lead you to either the right person or he's going to give you the revelation to know what to do or, or let someone run into you who knows how to do what he told you to do. And now he's led you to a person to give you the knowledge to be able to do what he told you to do. Let me say, so don't ever argue with the Holy Spirit. How am I going to do that? He's going to take it. He's going to give you an idea and make sure you understand exactly how to do it. Amen. Amen, Susan. See, when you're blessing to someone, and, and, and I'm glad you said that, Susan, if you notice, whenever you bless someone, whether it's money, in this case, an inhaler, however you bless someone, the way you know it's a blessing, watch their face when you bless them. I mean, sometimes, even when you say, I said this before, even when you pass somebody on the street and you say, hey, God bless you, God loves you, and they look at you as if you gave them a $100 bill. See, when you have nothing, money's not the only answer. When you have nothing and your 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 self-esteem is under the ground, you have no self-esteem, you have no money, and, and and most people, I look at people, and this makes me so mad. When I see somebody who's homeless on the street and somebody who has a lot of money of any kind, they walk by them and don't even look at them. When you don't even acknowledge the person standing there, that's the most disrespectful and most damaging thing you can do to someone who already has nothing. And now you don't even acknowledge they're standing there. You don't even look at them like they're not even standing there. That is the most brutal thing you could do to someone who has nothing. But when you say, God bless you, God loves you. I wish I had more. Or I, I wish I had something. But God bless you, brother. And all of a sudden, that blessing, thank you, Erica. Thank you, Erica. When you say God bless you, like you said, their face lights up because all they need to hear was that God loves you or somebody loves you. They may feel like nobody loves them, but just to hear you say, God bless you, brother. God bless you, sister. Jesus loves you. Wow. Thank you. At one time, I, saw, I, I said this young man, or there was the older guy. He was in front of 7-Eleven. And I came out and I said, I, and I said, God loves you. And he said, he said to me, why? That shocked me for a minute. I said, God bless you. Jesus loves you. And he said, why? I said, why? Because God loves all his, all his creation. He loves you as a child. He loves you. He made you. And, and it was almost as if he had never in his life heard God loves you. But when he said, why? Because he equated having nothing with nobody loves him, not even God. See, that's why, that's how we can be a blessing with our light. Our light can touch someone just by letting someone know that God loves them. They don't see love. They see nothing, not even God. They, they feel like they have absolutely nothing in this world or in the spirit. That's what true hopelessness is. You don't have anything in the world. You have nothing in the spirit. You literally have nothing. And that's why God blesses us. To be a blessing in some way, whether it's give them money, give them a smile. I, I gave this one guy something to read on top of it. About five years ago, five years ago, the Holy Spirit gave me a famous saying. And you can use this. What I used to do, I got to go back to doing it. When I gave people money, I, I folded up this message around the money. And the message said, teach a man. Wait, wait, wait. No, give a man, give a man a fish 
and you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. Let me say it again. You might want to write this down. Give a man a fish and you feed him for the day. Teach a man to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. Because now you just told him, you just taught him how to catch his own fish. And see, I used to type that out on a piece of typing paper and I would give it to a person with the money inside of it. So after I give them money, they have to open up and read it. And 99% of the time when I did that, the person opened up the paper and started reading it. Now, whether whether they understood it or not, I don't know. But that's a way of not just give them money, but give them message with the money. So now you bless them for the day by giving them money. And then when they open the paper, give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. Teach him how to fish, and you fed him for a lifetime. So what you've just done is saying, wow. And I always say, make sure, make sure, brother or sister, I'm, I'm giving this to you today, but make sure you you save just a little part of it to help someone else. And, and they usually go, okay, okay. Now, maybe they not they didn't understand that yet, but I always might, I always want to share that word with them. I'm giving I'm giving this to I'm giving this to you today, but please make sure you save just a little bit to help somebody else who who may who may need it. And most of the time they go, yeah, okay, okay, and then they read the message. So I just want to share that with you. This whole lesson is just a stimulate your mind and you may have more ways you come up with beyond like like sister susan her son uh gave an inhaler to someone who who had trouble breathing that was homeless and they didn't have the money to get it or they didn't even know how to get it you see holy spirit will always guide you the holy spirit will always guide you yeah amen Tamara. a prayer warrior some people need someone to pray with them in agreement see a lot of people a lot of people make you make the mistake of thinking that you need to pray for them. I, 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 what, I, what I always say to people, oh, Mr. Fitz, I need you to pray for me. I say, no, no, I'm going to pray with you. I can't pray for you because if you're not praying, I'm not praying in agreement. If you're not praying and you ask me to pray, your prayer is not going to be answered because you've got to be praying for me to pray in agreement. See, when we're praying in agreement, now two or more are gathered in his name. But when you're praying by yourself, Excuse me, when you ask me to pray and you're not praying, my prayers cannot be in agreement because you're not praying. So that's what that's where the power where two or more are gathered in his name, he is in the midst. And we have to remember that. So I always share with someone, I'm not gonna pray for you, I'm gonna pray with you in agreement. So if you're praying, I'm praying in agreement with whatever you're saying. I am praying in agreement with your prayer. And now two or more are gathered in his name. And now the prayer can be activated and even more powerful. So we have to remember that because a lot of people will, 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 will email me. Could you pray for me? Uh, um, my prayers aren't working. No, no. You keep praying so I can be in agreement with you. Keep praying so I can agree with your prayer. And that's where the power is when we pray together as a fellowship. Not, not two or more together. We got 150 together in fellowship. This, this fellowship averages 150 a day. We see 35 on the screen. Only 35 are watching from YouTube. But remember, we're, we're joined by LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. So usually the average people watching this lesson every day is at 150. So we know that we're being a blessing to whoever and each one of us, all 150, go out for the fellowship and be a blessing. Let us be a blessing when we leave the fellowship. Go out and bless someone. Make that a commitment. Every time you leave fellowship, to be a blessing to at least one person every day. To let God's light in you touch someone every day. A smile, a, 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 some money, a gift, a, a, a pat on the back, a, whatever it is. Whatever it is, make it your own commitment to be a blessing to at least one person every day. It might be more. It might be hundreds. It might be thousands. When you go online, it's thousands. Because internet is the world. See, that that's something the Holy Spirit revealed to me. I thought internet was just the United States. No, internet is the world. And we're reaching parts of the country, uh, parts of the world, where you can't say praise God. There are many people listening who are listening to us, our channel, in parts of the world where you will be killed if you say praise God out loud. And I had a young man one time, he said, uh, he said, wow. He said, you know what? I wish I could I wish I could say praise God out loud, but but I can't I can't say it out loud. I said, where are you? 
He said, Pakistan. Oh, okay, well, I understand it, young man. But he was on fire for the Lord. He was a teenager, but he couldn't say praise God because he lived in Pakistan, and you will be killed praising God out loud. See, so my, 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 my mother keeps telling me, stop it. My mother, see, my mother keeps telling me, stop praying, stop praying, stop praying, stop saying that. That's what the mother kept saying. But he would say, I'm not, I'm not going to stop praying. I love the Lord. I love Jesus. I'm not going to stop praying. I turn on your channel every day. This was just the prayers. This was before Golden Nuggets. S six months later, testimony. Six months later, he he, he commented, oh, praise God, Mr. Fence. Me and my mother love your channel. What? Me and my mother love your channel? That means his fire for the Lord eventually turned his mother around. Remember, his mother kept saying, stop listening to that stuff. Stop listening to that stuff. Stop listening. But he kept praising. He kept worshiping. He kept praising. Six months later, man, me and my mother, me and my mother love, we just love the Lord. I said, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Bintu from Saudi Arabia. Bintu in the middle of all the stuff around him. And Brother Bintu, he's been with us every day since he joined us last, uh, last week, I think it was. Last week, a year before, a week before. But when you're in places, when you live in places where you'll be punished, punished for the love of the Lord, yet you let the light fire. You let the you let your light burn for the Lord. You don't let anyone turn or burn or, or put your light out. You just keep you just keep praising God. Let the fire of the Holy Spirit just burn inside of you. Keep praising, keep shouting, keep praising, keep shouting and praying and worship and let the light of the Lord keep on shining. There's the light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. This the light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Wherever you are, this the light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. And now, now, yesterday, I promised you guys, I promised you a drawing. Remember, I said, I can't go to, I can't come back to the fellowship without this drawing. I did it last night. Now, don't, it, 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 I posted it. I posted it on Facebook this morning. And the, it's on YouTube as well. But I finally did it. Here it is. Beep, beep. Praise God. Beep, beep. Resist the devil. He will flee. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, there's the devil. No, he's he's praising. Beep, beep. <laughs> I told you guys. I told you I was going to draw it. There it is. Praise. Resist the devil. And he will flee. Resist the devil. And he will flee. Amen. Amen, Lisa. Uh, next week, I'll, I'll bring some more poems back. Amen. That's what that message is. That's what the message is. I posted on Facebook. If you want to see it again, uh, it's on the YouTube channel. Go to the community page. For those who don't know, if you have a YouTube channel, when you come to our channel, click on the word community. It's right next to playlist. When you click on community, that is a page in, on YouTube that looks like Facebook. Now you can't uh, go on, uh, Erica. Yes, uh, when you when you uh, when you go on the un a community page, you can't you can't respond unless I type something. I thought it was like YouTube. It's not. You can only respond to what I post. I thought you could post too, but when you go there on community page, you'll see all the drawings and all the visuals. I share them every day. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You see it? Yeah. It's on the community page. So I post on that page every day. Amen. So, so I want to make sure I'm. Uh, these are all the ways I want you guys to just pick one. And when we, when this lesson closes, I want you to pray the Holy Spirit. Pray the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, guide me, use me, show me, show me what to do to be a blessing today. See, it might change. It might, I'm trying to, I'm trying to work on it. Wonder God, that's a T-shirt I'm trying to work on right now. I gotta practice my drawing first, but I, that's a T-shirt I'm working on. I put a lot of new T-shirts. If you look look below the video, I have a lot of new t-shirts that you can see. But when you click on any t-shirt under the video, it takes you to the entire website. Amen. Amen. So so I want to let you understand, we all, as I close, we all can be a blessing in some way. And this whole lesson is there's so many ways to be a blessing. And just pray the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, show me how I can be a blessing today. And that might turn into something that you do every day. Sometimes it's something different every day. But when you say it every day, Holy Spirit, use me. Use me, Lord. Use me. Show me what you mean. How can I be a blessing today? And he'll tell you. And just be, be obedient. Whatever the Holy Spirit tells you to do, to be a blessing, do it. And you're walking in obedience. 
you're walking in obedience amen amen oh you like the video yeah i just put the video out because a lot of you on youtube do not see the the, the products on uh, facebook and twitter and linkedin so i just put a video up that shows some of the products uh, for those of you who don't have facebook and twitter and linkedin so you can see the products and when you go to the website you see all the products there's way more products than on the video there's there's over there's over a hundred over a hundred products of shirts t-shirts stickers stickies sticky pads stickers all kinds of stuff so these are all other ways of supporting the ministry because not only are you supporting the ministry but we're representing by wearing like i see here i this is what i got from somebody else jesus people see jesus i don't have to say nothing else <laughs> I don't have to say another word when I walk down the street with Jesus on my chest. I don't have to say another word. They know I love the Lord. If I'm going, these people wear T-shirts with cursing. They wear T-shirts with all this crazy stuff. I'm wearing a T-shirt with Jesus. I'm telling people where I'm coming from. You look at my shirt. You know where I'm coming from. I love the Lord. I praise God. The mugs. We got mugs that have the word of God, so you don't forget it. We got T-shirt. We got sticky pads. See, Jesus tells them, I love the Lord. The one I got, the other one, Sister John have, it says, uh, Jesus is my superhero. And people say, whoa, your superhero? Yeah, you guys are enjoying Superman and Batman. I'm I'm worshiping a real superhero, superhero who woke me up every morning, who gives me healing, who provides, who, guide, who guides, who takes care of my life, takes care of my family. That's a superhero to me. Now, I watch these other superheroes, and the movie ends. That's where the superhero ends. But with Jesus... <laughs> With Jesus, the movie doesn't end. It's an ongoing movie. The superhero that lasts forever. Jesus. Praise God. Whew. Don't get it started. Stay calm. Stay calm as I close. So that's what that's what I want you guys to take away from today. Let his light shine through you and touch others. That's the lesson for the day. That's a, <laughs> it's a series, amen. The, the the superhero series that never goes out. Jesus is our superhero. Every single day we wake up, he's our superhero because he's protecting us every day. He's guiding us every day. He's taking care of us every day. He's protecting every day. He's blessing every day. He's moving every day. That's a superhero I keep my eyes on because he's living proof that we're children of God and nothing shall by any means hurt us or block our blessings in any way in jesus name amen 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 erica amen father god we thank you right now lord we thank you thank you thank you for being a blessing to this fellowship lord thank you for touching this fellowship right now thank you for moving mightily in each fellowship member's life right now as we come together six days a week loving you every day lord thank you right now in advance lord thank you in advance for healing and provision and all the things we're taking we're, we're lifting up to you every day lord for when you said your word two or more are gathered in your name you are in the midst lord so we come here in fellowship in numbers lord in your name two or more gathered together in your name knowing you are in the midst of our life in the midst of our situation in the midst of our struggle in the midst of our infirmities whatever it is we're going through right now lord you are in the midst of it touching healing providing protecting directing whatever it is we need and that's what we say every day lord we praise our way through praise our way to the victory over whatever whatever we're going through it doesn't matter what it is it doesn't matter what we need we know that you're with us every step of the way no matter what it is lord you're with us every step of the way we are never alone and we say thank you jesus for never leaving us to help us make it through the storm to help us make it through the darkness like we sing every day you saved us from all the hurt and pain you saved us so we can live again thank you jesus praise god what a wonderful day we've had but before we go as always before we go someone is watching right now the holy spirit is telling me someone is watching right now who does not know our lord and savior jesus christ someone is watching right now who is crying the entire time the whole two hours crying because all you see is darkness depression heaviness 
hopelessness, even suicidal thoughts. You feel like giving up on everything right now. Oh, thank you, Jesus, right now. Touch that person. I'm talking to you right now who's listening to me. You're not here by accident. The Holy Spirit brought you here. God brought you here to bring healing into your life, peace into your life. You may be here as a backslider, walking in guilt, because you know you did wrong. You left the Lord, and you're walking in sin, and now you want to come back to the Lord, and the devil's telling you, you can never go back to God. Once you fail God, you can never go back. And that is a lie from the pit of hell. All have sinned. No one is perfect. If you've been one, if you're walking in sin and you want to come back to the Lord, just say the prayer of salvation over again. And there's nothing the devil can do to stop you. So whether you've been walking in sin as a backslider, you're depressed, and you want to come, you want to learn who God is to save you, or you just want to know who Jesus is. All of you pray with me right now. Pray with me right now. Father God, forgive me for the wrong I've done and the wrong I've been. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe He died on the cross for me and my sins and was raised from the dead. I want Jesus to be Lord and Savior of my life. And I commit right now, I will not do a single thing in life or make a single decision in life without lifting up to you first. Create me, O oh Lord, a clean heart. And remove from me, Lord, anything and everything that is not like you, in Jesus' name. And if you said that prayer sincerely, your spirit is now right to receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a part of God that lives inside of you, to teach you, to guide you the things of God. The Holy Spirit will also show you the people, the activities, and things you're doing right now, which is bringing the darkness into your life and depression. Every day, spend time with God. Feed your spirit, starve your flesh. Feed your faith, starve your doubt. Not just every Sunday, every day. Spend time with God every day. And the more time you spend with the Lord, the more peace you'll feel in your life. Which is God letting you know, it's going to be all right. God's got this. God's got you. Amen. And Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, we as a fellowship rebuke and bind the spirits of retribution, revenge, retaliation, and backlash in every other demonic spirit, named unnamed, seen unseen, who may try to attack anyone in this fellowship because of their participation in this fellowship. And we cast all you demonic spirits out of our mind, out of our spirit, out, out of our families, out of our homes, all back to the pit of hell from which you came in Jesus' name. And Father God, loose, Lord, loose into the fellowship, loose unspeakable joy loose peace beyond understanding loose restoration Lord restore restore every area of our life everything in our life everyone in our life Lord loose reconciliation Lord heal marriages right now and families right now who are falling apart because of the devil attack Lord bring joy back forgiveness back communication back to those relationships and marriages right now, Lord. And Lord, keep a hedge of protection over all the families and marriages who are not falling apart, but who the devil still attacks every day, Lord. Loose supernatural healing, emotional healing, physical healing. By your stripes, we are healed. We are healed. And we speak it every day, confess it every day. I believe I receive my healing in Jesus' name. I believe I receive my healing in Jesus' name. Say it every day, see it every day, speak it every day, believe it every day. Push, pray until something happens, until it manifests in your life. Loose, supernatural overflow, financial breakthrough, supernatural debt cancellation. Lord, let your blessings of abundance, blessings of abundance rain down, Lord. Rain down on the fellowship right now for whatever financial need, large or small, for you shall supply all our need according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not want for anything. For the Lord is my shepherd. For we're the head and not the tail. We are above and not beneath. We're the lender and not the borrower. We're blessings flowing in, blessings flowing out. We're blessed that we may be a blessing to others. We are out of debt. All 
or these events. We are put the board to put in store. We are children of God. And nothing shall by any means hurt us or block our blessings in any way. And finally, Lord, we thank you for our miracle, Lord. Each fellowship member has a miracle they've been praying for for so long, Lord. And we now know as a fellowship to spend time, spend time every day, seeing your miracle, see it every day, see it, believe it, receive it to your heart. And once you receive it to your heart, start expecting it, expect a miracle, start walking in it, even before it's here. We don't know the when. We will never know the when. But because we don't know when, that means that any day we wake up, any day we wake up, could be the day of the manifestation of the miracle we've been praying for for so long. So Father God, all these things we ask, all these things we ask, in Jesus' name we pray. Let the fellowship say, amen, amen, amen. Hey, Alfreda.